Logarithm's Netmon Freemium delivers real-time network visibility to quickly identify emerging threats in your IT environment. Netmon Freemium is a free commercial-grade network forensics and traffic analytics solution. You can use Netmon Freemium's powerful capabilities to search against all of observed network traffic, identify abnormal traffic patterns and application usage, and quickly analyze full packet captures. Take the first step towards real-time network visibility. Visit logarithm.com forward slash freemium to learn more and download it today. The Threat Connect platform enables organizations to identify, manage, and block threats faster with threat intelligence, automation, and orchestration. Providing security teams a platform to unite their people, processes, and technologies behind an intelligence-driven defense. Threat Connect helps increase visibility into networks and integrates with defense tools to close the gap between threat detection and response. Get your free Threat Connect account today by visiting threatconnect.com forward slash security weekly. Endgame automates the hunt for both known and never before seen adversaries in enterprise networks. Built on unique knowledge on the adversary's tools, techniques, and tactics, Endgame's centrally managed agent prevents, detects, and responds to advanced adversaries at the earliest stages of the kill chain without prior knowledge. Endgame, automate the hunt. Welcome back to Paul Security Weekly. A couple more quick announcements. The 10th anniversary edition of Source Boston is being held this April, including training sessions held on April 24th through the 25th and conference talks on the 26th and 27th, featuring awesome speakers from the security community. In events will take place in Boston at the Courtyard Marriott downtown, and Security Weekly listeners get a $100 off discount on either the training or conference passes when using the discount code Security Weekly. Visit Source conference for more information. Get out and vote for your favorite security blogs and podcast, which is Security Weekly. Security Weekly has been nominated for the 2017 RSA Social Security Awards Best Security Podcast. Cast your vote today by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash vote, which will take you to the Survey Monkey survey, which will let you vote for your favorite security podcast. Paul Security Weekly. Security Weekly. <laughs> That's right. I mean, whichever one is your favorite, not necessarily us, of course. It that could be, be Enterprise Security presumptuous. Weekly. Presumptuous. Startup yeah. Security Weekly. That's right. it's that, well, I think we're options. actually listed as Security Weekly, which is kind of weird because there's multiple shows in the network, which is still taking time to people to figure out that there are multiple that shows. That there's like three or four different there's variations of it. Four. There's actually a fifth that's unreleased that's coming out soon. So. And I'm going to be a, um, a like a normal contributor to that one. You can you can come on that. It's Secure Digital Life, man. It's it's actually pretty awesome. Um, there's a, a couple of guys that uh, we're friends with that decided they wanted to do a show with us. Believe it or not, they want to hang out with us, right? Uh, Doug White, he's the director of uh, information security uh, programs at Roger Williams University, uh, and Russell Bachman, who's also works for Roger Williams University. And Russell was do, like the best I, description I have is Russell's doing this demonstration. It's security for individuals, right? But he's like, so this is a VPN, and he's got like a salt and pepper shaker, a straw, and then a cup with water. And then he pours some port wine. And I'm like, dude, what is he? I'm like, why did, I'm in the background going, why does he have the good port wine? What's he doing with it? <laughs> he's like, oh, he's just using it for his demonstration. I'm like, I hope he drinks it afterwards. <laughs> right. So he pours it, and he's like, the water's polluted. And then he dips the straw in the polluted water, and he's like, clean water can flow through the straw between the salt and the pepper shaker. Even though the water's polluted, and the water can still be clean. He was describing VPNs right. on, on the show. Oh, cool. So it's kind of like that level with, you know, all IoT, antivirus, mobile security kind of built in. But the guys are absolutely hilarious. D Doug is hilarious. Russell is hilarious. They're, it's really, really great. So Security for the lay person. Yeah, security for like technology people. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, they, yeah. you, you gotta be into a little bit of technology, I think, to uh, to appreciate the show and and get into it. So, uh, our uh, technical segment uh, slash interview with Nathaniel Q. Quist is about. Did I say that right? Is it Quist? Yeah, Quist. Correct. I'm just gonna call you Q because I, I think that's, that's an awesome perfect. that's an awesome nickname. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I've, I've, I've always wanted to say this, so bear with me. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Excellent. Thank you very much, Q. Q, what, is your, uh, what do you do for, for a logarithm? So 
So with Logarithm, I'm part of the, uh, we've just re renamed it, so forgive me if I slip up once. Um, uh, it's a forensic co-pilot. used to be called the Incident and Response Team. Um, what uh, we do here in Logarithm is uh, we actually work with clients to help uh, mitigate and understand what happened in their environment um, after a breach happened or, um, you know, something suspicious happened. So we'll do a consult call with them, um, figure out uh, what happened in their environment, and try to help them uh, um, figure out how to, uh, you know, get through it all. That's awesome. So, yeah. um, so what are some of the recent trends you're seeing when you consult with companies that are, are being breached? Like what are the, what are the symptoms? <clears throat> what are the causes of the breach? What are some of the trends? Yeah, um, I saw a lot of the trends that we're seeing. Um, I'm, we're, we're kind of focusing now on um, um, a lot of Middle Eastern sort of things right now, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, um, there's some some things that have been um, out for a long time, like several years, like 2012 and older, that are kind of resurfacing and coming back into the environment underneath the um, kind of new guises, which has been kind of interesting to look at. And so we are uh, have a couple of reports coming out. Um, we're actually going to start um, bringing out some um, actually trending reports, some, some uh, threat intel reports in the near future that we're going to, um, you know, bring out to the public and uh, kind of, you know, put logarithms, I guess, uh, threat intelligence um, sort of uh, name kind of on the map, which is kind of a kind of a cool thing to be a part of. Cute. Do you see people, uh, attackers specifically or exploit kits, attacking systems like logarithm in an attempt to cover their tracks? You know, um, I, I can't actually say that um, we've actually seen anything where they're 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 directly subverting you know logarithm in order to get through. Um, you know, not to say that it couldn't happen. I mean, uh, certainly mm -hmm. could. I mean, I think I think SIM would be something that um, if you do. I mean, if you were going to be an advanced attacker, you would want to know if the uh, whoever you were attacking did have a SIM and then how to subvert said SIM. Um, I would always like to throw all the other competitors under the bus first and say logarithm could could get through that. Um, I mean, really, because we do uh, look at ourselves um, pretty heavily. I mean, um, I'm not necessarily well-versed in all the depths of all the other sims, but, um, you know, we do look at, uh, at the health and the longevity of our own sim um, pretty heavily. So, mm -hmm. What is uh, some of the common techniques that you see attackers using to subvert detection once they gain a foothold? Um, you know, when it comes to um, subverting detection, um, you know, um, mostly we're, we're focusing on the malware side um, of it. So we see a lot of subversion of, like, say, AV. We're seeing a lot of subversion of, um, you know, some of those IDS systems. Um, that kind of sim is kind of an interesting um, place to, you know, kind of detect some of those pieces because we, we, we detect from multiple angles, and we can kind of see mm. um, some sides. I mean, obviously, if, um, sim's also kind of in a, in, a, in a tough location just because if you're not – um, getting the logs correctly from those log sources or those endpoints, then it's kind of difficult to uh, to get those into the sim environment um, and and then detect on them. Um, but uh, you know, if you're if you're collecting everything from across your environment and you're making a, a strong um, stand on your endpoints and you're you're really trying to get you know which commands were were actually executed on your endpoints and uh, um, you know trying to get everything out of you uh, out of you know everything you possibly can out of those um, endpoint monitoring systems and your firewalls and all of that. Um, there, there really is no reason why you shouldn't be able to find, um, you know, what's happening in your environment. You should be able to follow the bread comes back. Right. Uh, along those lines, you know, having worked for a vendor and, and studying vendors on, on sure. our shows, uh, I think oftentimes it comes down to the configuration of the security appliance, the security software. Like, what are some of the things that you're like, Oh, I wish more customers would configure it this way and they'd be more successful in detecting attacks. Sure, most certainly. I think um, some of those pieces where, where it would be really helpful would be to have, um, you know, those command line injections, you know, to be able to have PowerShell, you know, logging. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, PowerShell version 5 is awesome. Everybody should have it on their systems. Um, you know, should have that enabled. You should have, you know, Sysmon, um, you know, brought with the, with the uh, you know, internal suite. That should be a part of your environment. So just so you can get some of those endpoint security pieces um, brought into your environment. Um, you know, at the very least, at least on your file, uh, you know, file servers, your your major core infrastructure that everybody's touching. You know, if those get compromised, you know, it's kind of game over. So, Q, what are some of the uh, tips you have for folks uh, that are doing incident response? Obviously, you're going in after an incident. We've been talking a lot about incident response on the show this year specifically. What are some of the critical components you see missing from people's incident response and forensics programs that uh, could be improved upon uh, in the future? Sure. Um, 
you know, I think the biggest part we just kind of touched on a little bit is they're just not logging enough. Um, you know, logging in the past has been, um, you know, kind of hit or miss, but uh, in today's day and age and with all the different systems, I mean, LogRhythm has a, has a queue of, of requested systems to have logs, you know, um, you know, parsed properly, you know, you know, specifically for those individual log sources. And, um, you know, having, having very detailed log sources, um, you know, from your entire environment is massively important when it comes to, you know, how to detect something. Um, and I think by far and large, I, I think that most clients just don't understand what to turn on. They just don't know um, necessarily that, that, oh, you need to have more than just standard default logging. You know, we can actually up the ante on, you know, your AD logging and actually you have, you know, um, every action of login event instead of just a very default basic um, standard. I mean, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, levels or echelons that I found with log sources that uh, you can really um, push log rhythm uh, and any sim, really, for that matter, um, to a very um, you know extreme level where you're logging almost every single event that's coming through. I'm um, just to, to to take Carbon Black for an example. Um, Carbon Black has you know watch list levels that you can set a basic watch list where where if some event hits a watch list within Carbon Black and then goes to um, Logarithm, Logarithm is just going to see the watch list event. But you can turn that off and you can have every single event in your entire environment coming from black, uh, carbon black into logarithm. And, and you can, you know, really, you know, send so much data to logarithm, um, almost to the point where, you know, I mean, it's, it can almost be too much. So you have to, you know, you have to balance it, balance mm. it right. You have to find a good balance. So Q, are, are people still, most organizations still just kind of monitoring the network devices and not trying to get data from like the host itself and the other events and logs that are potentially going on in the environment. And that's some of the stuff that's missing to really correlate what's going on in the environment. Um, I, I could uh, almost say yes to that. I would want to caveat that, honestly, with, um, you know, it depends on your client. It depends on the client's, you know, vertical or, or wherever they're, they're stationed in, in, in the environment uh, or within their industry. Um, some clients are really good at pulling only endpoints, and they may not be so good at pulling, you know, um, you know firewalls or things of that nature. And then it could be the reverse, where some people are just, um, all they really pull in are, are firewalls. And they don't have any endpoint uh, specifications or their SIM appliance. I mean, you think of the hardware limitations that itself um, might not be able to pull in every single endpoint you have in the environment, but it might be able to pull in, um, you know, very detailed information from that core infrastructure that I, that I mentioned earlier. Right. But I think what you're saying is it, it's the more data that you could potentially get from the different components in the environment, the better information the sim's going to have to actually figure out kind of what's going on in the environment, right? And so <laughs> oh, most certainly. don't limit just to network or just to um, higher level events in the, the endpoint, for example. Give me more and I can actually make better sense of what's actually going on in the environment. Yeah, most certainly, 100%. I mean, the more data, the more raw data you get out of all of your endpoints, not just one or a couple, but but every single one of them, the more capability your SIM will have in being able to correlate events and figure out, um, you know, at least be able to piece together that that uh, that trail to figure out what happened in your environment. Um, you know, and then it comes down to, like, tuning your AIE um, system or your, um, uh, you know, advanced intelligence engine to, to actually detect those pieces and being able to see that transition um, of events. Got it. <clears throat> Q, do you <clears throat> take what you've learned from doing instant response and working with your clients and do you funnel that back into product management to make suggestions and do you have like kind of some examples of some things that you've learned from the experience and adapted the product? Um, Sure. So, so we've seen a, a lot of different uh, um, pieces that we've pulled out of the environment. We always try to take everything that we that we uh, encompass and then turn it into a module that that we can actually give back to our environment or give back to our clients. Um, so everything that we learn from one client, we try to turn that around and help everybody else that uh, mm -hmm. is, is a client of, of you know specifically um, friends at Copilot. Um, and, and they, they use, utilize our program and our, you know, our feature set. Um, we try to give that back to them um, and, and, and help everybody else. And then we also turn that around internally. And so we're trying to, to meld everything together from all our different clients uh, and bring that into um, um, we use our, our, our own threat intelligence uh, platform. Um, and we 
we we roll everything that we get into this you know into our uh, threat intel platform and then we tr- you know see what kind of correlations we can make on an industry trend wise um this is a, i'm still a very kind of new team um there's only 3 of us you know mm-hmm. so so sometimes it's a little uh we have to you know work pretty hard to to get through everything um but uh we're finding correlations in everything that we can find out of that we're we're trying as hard as we can to to give that back to the community uh as much as we can that's awesome. Yeah, it, Logarithm yeah. always struck me as a very customer-oriented uh, company, and the fact that there's a team that exists that you're on that does this kind of work is a testament to that. So. Yeah, that feedback loop, I think, is yeah. the important part, right? Because as you find new stuff, how do you productize that and, and mm-hmm. open it up to the rest of the customer so that it's easier for them to detect some of these events that are going on and, and, and really leverage all the data and all the expertise that I think your team's bringing to, to make the products better? Yeah, most certainly. I mean, uh, just a little bit about uh, my team. I mean, we have um, a malware reverser that's been doing malware reversing for uh, 15 years. Erica, she's been doing a great job. And then Ryan's been doing uh, incident response dedicated for the past uh, 10 years with uh, various different companies. So, um you know, we're we're really trying to bring that expertise and and bring it into a, a solid, cohesive, um, you know, product or platform that we can deliver to our clients and actually have um, something very unique that we can deliver to you know to the environment. Q, how is it important is it in the experience that you've had with Logarithms clients that they protect certain data points that are logging the incident and also certain systems that are contributing to incident response? You know, last week, you know, we talked about an interview where um, it was the Saudi Aramco breach, right, where they wiped out 35,000 systems and they had to start from scratch. Uh, so, like, what advice do you have for your clients uh, in those situations to protect both some of the log data and also some of the processes and communication systems that are part of incident response? Sure. Um, and again, I, I want to keep, you know, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm an employee of Logarithm, you know, and I think, you know, and I, I guess I'm still drinking the Kool-Aid after several years of working here. But um, I would really look into how does your detection system, when you first start understanding that there is a breach or there's an incident in your environment, how do you actually take almost immediate action on it, almost kind of an active defense sort of uh, environment? I know active defense kind of gets, you know, um, kicked to the side because it's too extreme or something like that. I'm a huge fan of active defense, and I'm a huge fan of your your book, too, by the way. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, it's it, it, it's uh, it, you know, and I, don't know, I think I think sim is is really cool to to put into that environment where it's in a very kind of unique spot to to actually do a, an active sort of event after um, detection or some sort of uh, you know, something after it. So, I mean, my first response to your question is, um, can we segment that network? Can we break it apart? Can we quarantine some systems that are um, potentially affected or even that we know they're infected um, and, and push those to a side? And we say, these are infected systems, and then we can stop, you know, the spread of infection. I mean, Shamoon has been in the... Um, mm-hmm you know, news quite a bit lately, and it's just, uh, um, you know, I mean, and I think that's probably the the uh, Cytico that, you, that you're referring to, yes, is yes. that um, they lost so many systems. Um, you know, if we were able to detect that first, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, it was back in 2012, it was decided as a, as a, as a worm, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know it, it moves through network propagation. So if we can detect network propagation before it really happens. Let's isolate that system before it has the capability to do that, turn off those user accounts, turn off some of those systems, and, you know, and, and push it out there. Mm. So do you see you know? logarithm going into what Gartner would call security orchestration and automation? You know, there's just new space out there, right, called security operations analysis and reporting, and they kind of break it up into three buckets. I still think it's one, but okay, so the analysts will do their thing. But you've got the threat and vulnerability management side. You guys play in the threat. We play as tenable in the in the vuln space, right? That's merging very quickly. Mm-hmm. You've got the SIR, the security incident response in the middle, which you guys play very, very well in. And then you have this whole new breed of security orchestration automation tools, the phantoms and those guys that are out there. And, you know, I can see... The different vendors starting to expand into these different areas to start to address security operations and analytics more holistically. Is that something you guys are seeing, you know, within Logarithm that that is important to deal with? Hey, I see an event, and in order to stop the propagation of that event, maybe I have to do some orchestration automation. Just curious how how you guys are thinking about that. 
Sure, most certainly. Um, that is a that is a big key. I mean, um, you know, from the founders on down, so Chris Peterson all the way down through, like you know, um, the lowliest person in in our uh, you know environment. I think we're all very key that that we want to make um, detection faster. We want to make the you know the big key words that we hear a lot are mean time to detect, mean time to respond. You know, how fast do we detect it? How fast can we respond to it? And we're trying to take that. You know, uh, what was the Verizon data breach? I mean, this is back you know a couple of years, 2015, uh, where it was 209 days or something ridiculous like that for a for a an incident to actually have any, um, you know, detection. I'm trying to take that down to, you know, hope, can we get it down to like, you know, the hour, you know, can we get it down to like, you know, within the minute, you know, can we, can we detect it as fast as that? Um, and if we can, how do we respond to it in a, in as fast of a manner as possible? I think that, uh, we're positioning ourselves into a spot where, where, uh, smart response plugins and things, uh, of this nature that, that work with tools, not just a uh, logarithm on its own, sequestered in its own little environment, but, but as a as a kind of a key glue piece that hooks a lot of different sock apparatus apparatus together or apparati I guess we can use the Greek <laughs> on that one um, we can uh, you know we can hook all these different things together and we can actually you know transition from from what we get from one tool and we can say hey other tool, you know, like say, let's take firewalls for example. We have all these systems in here that are talking to this external, you know. Um, you know, IP address. Let's let's go ahead and block it because it just seems mm-hmm. it seems so suspicious. Let's just turn it off now. Um, you know, but we're, you know, it wouldn't work. Sim wouldn't work. Logarithm wouldn't work without those other pieces, those other tools that that give it its information. I mean, it's not a one stop fit all. It's it really is trying to trying to mold multiple pieces together. So to kind of answer your question, um, I see that that trend kind of kind of. Bleeding out. There, there are teams that. You know, then there are there are companies, different companies that are that are trying to merge the pieces together. Logarithm is definitely taking that incident response. It's taking that detection and trying to move into. I wouldn't say full network organization, but but it is moving it towards towards an orchestration um, of, of some sort. I mean, from a security bent. I mean, the whole whole point of logarithm is to to keep your network more secure and more um, visible in a in a faster, easier manner. Q, are there um, research projects that your team is working on or other, like, cool aspects of logarithm that you want to bring to light for our audience? Yeah, sure, most certainly. Um, So uh, one thing that... uh so Logarithm is kind of a cool company. I'll give a nice little plug. I haven't given enough already, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, um, Logarithm does a thing once a quarter. We do something called Hackathon. And yeah, hackathon I wanted to ask is, you about that. So you do the okay. hackathons at, at Logarithm. Greg talked about that when he came on the show, Greg Foss. Um, and yeah, it sounded certainly. awesome. Yeah. Greg Foss had a, uh, actually, has a, I think I has a present for you next week, so look forward to that one. Oh, nice. I can't um, wait. <laughs> but, I think. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, you'll like it. Okay, it's, good. it's awesome. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's all as long as it's things. not IoT? soap, you're good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Depends on it, the soap. It, it's true. <laughs> So um, this last hackathon, um, unfortunately, I didn't have as much success to, as Greg did in the last hackathon. Um, but uh, this hackathon, what we ended up doing was we used uh, um, volatility as a log source. So like, I think we kind of all know volatility is a memory um, mm-hmm. analysis tool um, be, um, you know, placed on a, on a Linux platform. And what you can do is you can feed it uh, system images and then run plugins against it so you can find things like registry, registry, uh, tongue-tied, registry strings and um, you know, process lists, process executions, process trees, um, you know, timeline events, and you can kind of map everything that that uh, particular memory uh, image has done over the past um, little bit. So we thought it was a kind of a cool idea that if we take um, the volatility plugins and actually turn them into log sources for a SIM, and then the SIM ingest them like they would, um, you know, syslog or a flat file or Windows event log or whatever, um, and then we parse it out based upon all of its data that it has contained within it. Um, so we're able to see, you know, what, uh, you know, take NetScan as a, as a volatility plugin, for example. You can um, have that pull out, and, and it tells you all the different systems that that, uh, um, you know, that that, system connected to, you know, um, which ports or protocols are ran over, which uh, ports are ran over, then you can compare that with, like, say, um, you know, your, your process list and see if that process list had any of that. And then you compare that process list with anything from your registry list um, that you're, po- you're pulling out. And then Logarithm can do that correlation for you, and Logarithm can do the correlation that... Uh, or even just the the basic golden image analysis. Uh, if you know what processes a particular system is supposed to have, it can compare all the processes that came through that memory list mm. against that process list, and then any you know bad 
you know, processes that aren't in that golden image, you know, instantly get flagged, and then you have, you know, that much more visibility upon it. Um, so, so I think that was a really cool idea, um, and, and it actually ended up working. We had a, you know, a really awesome dashboard that came through that we could actually see the correlations from it. We had all the different process lists that came through. Um, you know, processes were flagged that weren't part of the golden image. Um, you know, and so in, like, in long-term pull on it, you know, how do we take that full circle? is if you do have a system that has been detected as some sort of compromise via an IDS signature or being, you know, um, some, even a, a firewall having an external connection going out, um, log, Logarithm can detect that, and it can then send a smart response to, say, some, um, you know, data collecting tool like, say, Carbon Black. I know I mentioned it a couple of times, but uh, um, Carbon Black has the ability to do a memory cabbage capture right there, and then we can have Logarithm trigger that memory capture. Carbon Black can capture that memory from that particular system, dump it into a file. Logarithm will then launch volatility to collect that memory image and pull all the specific uh, plugins against it. Then all of those plugins get dumped into a specific folder, and then you know we have all the data in Logarithm, and we can have almost immediate and dynamic, you know, um, memory image captures, pulls, mm -hmm. and then actually have that um, return back into the system um, via you know. A number of different other tools. So it's something cool that, that, that we're kind of working on, something that we're putting a lot of time and effort into. Um, but I think, it's, uh, I think it sounds pretty awesome. No, that is, that is really awesome. I, I think the integration to the endpoint is super cool into a lot of tools that do log analysis, network analysis, but then reaching into the... I'm seeing a trend this year of yeah, right. tools that can reach into the endpoint. They've been kind of flirting with it for a while, but I think it's really coming to fruition today. Yeah, and in, in understanding what's happening at the endpoint, the endpoint plays a critical part of the overall security posture and, well, and the more uh, data you have after from the it. Right. I mean, uh, it, the like, number one way is like phishing attacks, social engineering, client side, on the exploit, exploit. And, and, and there you go, right? And, and if you're not monitoring um, what's happening in the system, what's happening with new processes, new users being created, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, you're missing data that provides some of that intelligence yeah. into the sims that's needed to really correlate these events and say, hey, by the way, Something's going on. Let's flag this thing mm -hmm. as a potential indicator or an event. Awesome. Well, certainly. Well said. Well, Q, uh, Logarithm sounds like an awesome place to work, by the way. <laughs> Just yeah, The problem uh, is you guys are way, way north, and I'm way, way south. <laughs> it, is, it sounds like a really <laughs> great place to, uh, to work. So uh, we thank you, Logarithm, for their support of the show and uh, having awesome people like yourselves to come on and share uh, great information. Uh, I just have five questions left. Q, you said you were oh, listening five, to the five. show, so okay. you know the five questions. Maybe you've thought about them, maybe you haven't, but in any case, they're coming at you now. So three words uh -oh. to describe yourself. Um, I would uh, um, say uh, um, probably energetic, um, a puzzler, and uh, hopefully random. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? This is my favorite question. Ready? I've thought about this probably way too long, but it's, uh, it's an icicle. I think that would be pretty awesome. Yes, excellent. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Oh my God, what did you do? In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Did you think about this question a lot, Q? Because I'm kind of... No, I'm actually, it's funny. So when I was listening to the, the conversation before, um, I was just I was like, oh yeah, that's a question I didn't even think about. Um, and I guess my, my answer would be, um, um, it would depend on who. So I, first for some people, second for other people. That's a good, good answer. Uh, good point, choose yeah. two celebrities to be your parents. This is the um, the actual. So so uh, last night I actually um, thought about this, and I actually woke up in the middle of the night, and I um, just had the. I just could not think of the second one. So the first one, it's going to be my dad. It's going to be John Cleese. I just have to say that guy is is a, is awesome. Um, but uh, you know the, the the mom figure. I just it's such it's a, a tough hard, one. It's a tough one. It's a very yeah. hard one to say. Um, you know, um, I think that the closest one I'm going to go with is probably Uma Thurman. Nice, awesome. Yeah. Loved her in Kill Bill. I was going to say, which, which Uma Thurman killed Bill or... Uh, Mine would be Kill Bill. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. given pretty my talk, awesome that one, yeah. 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 I would, yeah. I would say Kill but, Bill. I have, I have uh, three daughters myself, so I'm, I'm always a strong of that strong female you know, yes. lead character. I, I did love his weapon of choice because the beautiful thing about an icicle is it melts. Is, is it melts. Yeah. No evidence no, Yeah, no evidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Which yeah. is concerning cool. when people tell me that because I <laughs> right because they really thought about it. They really thought about like if I had to like if I had to do this out, right, right how would I do it and, <laughs> and all the evidence would go away. Yes. 
<laughs> you know, talking to somebody, I've never even been in a fist fight. You know, honestly, I never have. So it's like I've thought about that probably way too much. <laughs> Well, Q, thank you very much for appearing on Security Weekly. It was nice to have you on. Um, and uh, props to you for working for Logarithm and, and continuing their awesome cause to make us all more secure. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. With that, we're going to do a short, short break, come back, and talk about our security news for this week. Security Weekly.